Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to our press conference to introduce our new manager, Rafa Benitez. And if we can start off with Vinny O'Connor from Sky Sports, please. Hi, Rafa. Good Hello, good you. afternoon. Um, just to start with, Rafa, what motivated you to take the, the job as Everton manager? <coughs> Obviously, I know about the the club about the the tradition the history and uh, the ambition of the of the owners the fans behind the team so all these things that uh, i think it's for anyone that knows the the history of the club is quite easy i am at home i want to compete i want to to challenge uh, for whatever you can challenge and then enough motivation i think it's a it's a great opportunity a challenge for me and i'm really pleased with that what reaction have you had personally from Everton and from Liverpool fans? And how did you also feel when a threatening banner appeared? Uh, obviously, an incident that Merseyside police are investigating. To be fair, the, the Evertonians around my place, they are quite happy and they were very supportive. Even the Liverpoolians, they were accepting that there is a chance uh, and it's an opportunity for me to come back to the Premier League to compete for something. So it was quite good. The, uh, talking about the banners, we can talk about one, two people, you never know. So then I think it's uh, better to uh, think about positive, how a lot of people uh, were encouraging me to, to do well. I'm happy with that. Obviously as well, Rafa, it was highlighted that after a Merseyside derby, you referred to Everton as, as a small club. How do you feel about those comments now? And, and what pressure, I suppose, does that, does your history put on you in this role as Everton manager? I said before that uh, it depends on the context. It's a long time ago, you are fighting for your club and then it's what I will do now. So if you are the manager, you have to defend your club in any context. In this case, uh, I will fight for Everton. I will try to do my best every single game and I will try to compete against anyone. So I'm really uh, pleased that uh, this club is, uh, is getting bigger and bigger and I'm happy with the idea that we can challenge and we can compete and I will fight for that. So what is the minimum target for success, Rafa? We have, uh, in terms of targets, it's always complicated. I think that my approach since I was in Valencia was one game at a time. Think about the next game as a, an opportunity to, to win and after see what happened, obviously. I know how uh, the team finished last year and we will try to, to be sure that we can do better. But um, I can be talking, so you say talk the talk and uh, walk in the walk. So I prefer to, to walk the walk and see if we can do well. And uh, hopefully everyone will be happy starting with me. And that means if I am happy, the fans will be very happy too. And obviously you're assessing the squad at the moment. When it comes to improving that squad though, do you have the final say on transfers and what truth is there in reports you're close to signing Denzel Dumfries with Koulibaly also potentially a target for yourself? Yeah, the reality is that uh, uh, when you go to any club, the, the manager has uh, always an important opinion. You have to work in the context also that you have a director of football, you have the board, uh, you have the financial restrictions, so a lot of things that you have to put together. But I'm quite happy with the commitment of the lads. Uh, they are training really well. I think that the, we can improve uh, things, so that is uh, one point. And if we can bring players, if we can add players, and they are good for us, I think uh, that is the, the objective. So to be sure that the, we improve the players that we have, uh, we have a, a good communication between every, everybody working here and managing the, the financial restrictions that uh, you have to manage, uh, but uh, doing that is still be ambitious. And obviously, you will have seen Jordan Pickford's performance in the Euros. Uh, what did you make of them? Have you been able to speak to Jordan? Have you been able to speak to Dominic Calvert-Lewin just now as well? Yeah, I was trying to be in contact with all the internationals. Uh, it was easier in some cases because the the time and others uh, was more complicated, but they're still in contact with the majority of them. And obviously, Pickford and Calvert-Lewin, yes, I was asking them uh, how they feel. I was following them and uh, supporting them until the last minute and after the game, obviously, to know what they are thinking about to do. We gave them some some days off and they will stay with the families and then it's just uh, the normal things with players. That I think that they did great. It's a great achievement for, 
for England, for them. Even Calvert Lewin was playing not too much, but they still to be there and to be part of this group. I think is is good for them now, and it will be good for them for the future. Thanks, Vinny. We'll go to thank you, Al Alistair McGowan from BBC, please. Hi, Rafa. Hello. Hi. Um, I just wanted to ask you, can you understand why some of Everton fans have reservations about you becoming the manager? And what is your message to them? Yeah, that is football. And football is quite emotional. So everybody uh, will have uh, their own opinions. But that, the only thing that I can say is that what I said before in some of the questions is just that I will fight for my team uh, like I did in every place that I was uh, working and then for me it's a challenge, for me it's a great opportunity to do well in the Premier League and to show everyone that uh, we can compete, we can do well and I will be the first one to be there pushing and pushing to be sure that uh, we can get what we want, that is uh, three points in any game or maybe go as far as we can in the, in the cup competitions. And I just wondered, when you went to Chelsea there was also some reservations from fans there. Is that something that you will sort of lean on? Is, it, is that something that you hold and will give you confidence about building a relationship with the fans? Yeah, in terms of um, my approach, I am a professional and uh, very competitive. So then I like to see people enjoying the, the team. And uh, the best way to do that is uh, winning. I have confidence that we did it before and I'm sure that we can do it now. So. A very good staff, very good people around. The people that were here, uh, they have been very supportive. So I think that the, we are creating a, uh, an atmosphere that the, will allow us to compete at the maximum level. And I, ha I have uh, confidence that we will do well. Thanks, Alistair. We'll go to Ian Thank Abrahams you. from TalkSport. Hi, Rafa. How are you? Hello. Fine. And you? Good. Thank you. Uh, and just to carry that on about the fans' reaction at Chelsea, I mean, you, you were successful there. You won the Europa League there, despite the fact the fans didn't take to you. Do you worry at all that the fans at Everton or the fans at Liverpool, one, one or the other, you might ruin your relationship with Liverpool fans or you might not win over the Everton fans? To be fair, and I will tell you something that maybe not too many people know, but when I was uh, there in Chelsea, in Coban, we were going to the supermarket, to the restaurants, and the fans were really good. So we didn't have this... Uh, things that you could see sometimes in the TV. So the majority of the fans, uh, every day, they, they were fine. I can see in Liverpool, Liverpool is my city. We have uh, very good connections in the red uh, side, in the blue side. And now, obviously, uh, a lot of people in the blue side, they will be pleased if I am successful. So I don't see a big issue. I think that the fans uh, appreciate that uh, we will be here working really hard for, for the team, for the club, and then if we can do well, nobody will be talking about that, uh, what happened in the past. So I'm thinking about the future. I know that they want me uh, to be successful, and I am sure that uh, we can do it. You said earlier you could talk the talk, but you want to walk the walk. Um, you're, you're at a club which, with the greatest respect in the world, has been underperforming for the, the, the quality of players they've had in the last few years. So how do you uh, anticipate turning that around and how quickly? Yeah, it's not easy, the Premier League, for anyone. There are too many teams that are uh, spending big money in the last year. They have very good uh, players uh, in all the, the the majority of the teams, to be fair, and especially the, the top ten in this case. Then my idea is just to be sure that the team has confidence. Uh, the players that we have already, they feel that uh, they can be stronger if they stick together. And after try to bring some players to be sure that we can fill the gaps that we have and uh, create a team that now can be competitive, that has to be even more competitive to be sure that we are better than the last season. So that is just the, the target to be to improve. And uh, how much can we improve is what we have to see depending on how we train, how we work and if we have a little bit of luck. Thanks, Ian. We'll Thank you. go to Gilam Balagay, please. Hello, Rafa. Hello, how are you? You will be judged uh, good, good. Uh, you, you will be judged, I guess, on results. Fans will do that, of course, but I got the impression by what you're saying that your role will be bigger than just a head coach. That am I right in thinking that part of your job will be to change the culture of the club to make it even to get closer to that winning uh, 
fruit that you want. Yeah, I will tell you that I have had uh, conversation with some senior players. I'm really pleased because uh, all of them, they are ambitious, but all of them, they realize that uh, something was missing. This something that uh, was missing is uh, what we have to be sure that uh, we find. And for me, it's just the winning mentality that there has to be from the first day until the last day. So normally, if you win trophies, if you compete for something, it's at the end of the season. And it's when you have to be stronger. We have experience doing that. And I, I am confident that we will do it. And the mentality, the conversation with these senior players has been uh, more or less in this direction. So they want to, to do well. They are desperate to, to be sure that uh, we can improve and in the positive way. So I think it's, uh, it's a very good thing for me that you have these players, that they will carry on, they will continue pushing, and it will be an example for the young players. Hopefully, that is uh, what I am expecting. Thank you, Gilad. We'll go to Thank you. David Chisnell, please, from Granada Reports. Hi, Rafa. I hope you're well. Hello. Um, you too. Hello. Just a quick one of the process. Who approached who first then? Did you approach Everton? Did they approach you? How did that happen? Yeah, modern football is uh, quite complicated because you have too many people around. But uh, when someone knew that I was available, then we started the contacts and then little by little we were... Uh, sharing uh, information, communication, interviews, and then it was easy. It was easy for me because uh, obviously I wanted to come back and to have a competitive uh, team. And it, I think it was not so easy at the beginning because obviously they, they have to consider a lot of options, but uh, little by little they were convinced that there could be an option to have a manager with experience uh, that could win uh, trophies and could compete. So it's what we were looking for, for my side and for them side. When you saw the banners from the fans, was there ever any part of you that just thought, look, it, it's not worth putting myself under this threat, putting my family <coughs> under this? No, for sure not. I was convinced when I decided to to say yes, or even when I decided to start talking, I was convinced that it's a great opportunity. And for me, it's uh, this challenge. So it's not something that I am scared of, it's the opposite. So it's, uh, I want to win, I want to do well. And uh, what means to win? So what I said before, starting with the first game and see what happened the second one, the third one. So that is uh, to be competitive for me, is to be ambitious and try to do my best in every single game. So I, I have, uh, I'm sure that we will do it and I'm sure that uh, we can do well. And um, slightly took in cheap on this one, but obviously Duncan Ferguson, you've named him as one of your assistants. Were you a bit worried when you first met Duncan, obviously him being such a legend here and, and you and your connections with Liverpool? No, I knew him, obviously, because I was following uh, games uh, around all these years and especially here. But uh, another thing that I did was to check, uh, to watch uh, some of the goals that he scored, these videos, and uh, after watching him, uh, on the pitch, he, he could play. If we need a striker, maybe still he can play. So, no, he's a, he's a legend. He's a, uh, he will be a, an important part of uh, my staff because obviously he knows the players, he knows the club, he knows the fans. So I think he, he can be an inspiration for a lot of them and he can be very helpful for me. Thanks, David. We'll go to James Mountford from Radio Merseyside, please. Hello, Rafa. Uh, Hello. Nice to talk to you. Um, you are obviously the, the first ever Everton manager to have Liverpool on their CV. So what is it, what is it about Liverpool, about Merseyside, that has, has drawn you back and, uh, and has enabled you to, to keep a base here all these years? Yeah, I have a great connection with the city. We were supporting a lot of uh, charities. We have a lot of uh, friends in both sides. So for us, uh, it's just uh, to enjoy the city, to be fair, for my family, everyone. And I'm really pleased and really proud to to be here and hopefully to do well. So that's uh, the main motivation. So the connection with the city uh, keeps me happy here. Uh, to come back to the Premier League is another great opportunity. And to do with a team that uh, can compete for something, is, uh, I think it will be, will be great. And specifically on your squad, Rafa, James Rodriguez, how... Pivotal, how, how much of a future does he have with you and, and in the way you want to play? We really don't talk. I am sure that the, your your friends will be asking me about players, this one, the other one. I think it's important now to talk about the team, the, the ideas, more than individuals. So everybody has to uh, keep training, do their jobs, and we will continue looking for 
the best options uh, for uh, improving the team. But uh, we expected don't talk about the individuals, but it's not fair for the other for the other players. I understand. Uh, just generally speaking, then, in terms of how you would like your Everton team to play, how much work do you think it, it needs to be done to this current squad? Yeah, obviously, I would say something that is very simple is to play well. And people will say, what means to play well? I remember it was a debate in Spain about a long time ago to play well if a good tackle or a good header was good or it was better to play 20 passes. So I think it's, uh, uh, we have to create a team that will be competitive, that has to uh, fight for the shirt from the first minute until the last minute, don't give up. And uh, it doesn't matter the name of the opponent, try to win. That's it. The way to do it, if we have to play on the floor, pass the ball 20 times, we will do it. If we have to do it five times, play counter-attack, we will do it. So we have an idea that uh, we need to do the best for winning games and uh, trying to play a good football, if it's possible, obviously. But uh, we are not as stupid and we know that the, the fans, they want to see the team playing well, but winning. It was a tricky question a long time ago to a Spanish coach and they, they were asking him if you want to play well and lose or play bad and win. And he made a mistake because he said to play well and lose. The day after he has to go uh, live in the TV, I said, no, no, what I say is that if we play well, we can uh, win more games. Blah, blah. So the fans, they want to see the team winning and playing well, and we will try to do that. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, James. We'll, uh, we'll just take one more in the open section from Jim Conlon, please. Hello, Rafa. Rafa, yeah. I, was, I was just wondering, Rafa, about Seamus Coleman. Uh, he's been the captain for Everton for so long and so much Irish connections with Seamus. Have you spoken to Seamus and will Seamus be the captain of Everton this year? I, since I am here, I have been talking with him so many times. I think he's an inspiration for everyone. A very good professional. And today, 20 minutes before to come here, I was talking with him. So he's uh, very helpful for me. And he can be a key player. Uh, can he be the captain? Yes, why not? Because I said before, he's a great professional and I like him as a player and as a person. So we will see, obviously, but uh, I'm really happy with that.